What's up everybody? Welcome back to my channel. Happy Father's Day. Today is Sunday, June 20th. We're here at my house. I know you're used to me having um, fishing videos, but today's gonna be a little bit different. Um, we're having a little cookout, discada at my house. Uh, the kids are gonna be swimming and stuff. So I made discada quite a few times. Um, please forgive the sweat, it's freaking hot out here. I'm about to put on a hat here in a second. It's 93 degrees, but anyway, uh, we're gonna do a discada real quick. I know there's a bunch of videos on how to make them, how everybody does them. I'm gonna do my own because everybody's different. But uh, kind of like with my fishing, I kind of explain why I do certain things a certain way. So it kind of helps you to understand, you know, whether or not you want to use that for your recipe or if you want to try something else. So hopefully you'll like it. Hopefully it'll come out. I made it, like I said, quite a few times. So let me show you my setup. So this is my disc. This is a 24 inch disc from Southwest Disc. Uh, I can put the link uh, to their website uh, in the description. But it's a 24 inch disc. It's a really huge disc. I've made uh, these kind in here for 40 plus people uh, with food left over. So that's kind of why I got this one. Just because when it's, you know, when we do parties or cookouts or whatever, um, there's plenty of space. You can cook all at one time. You don't have to use multiple pots and pans. Uh, I use the gas myself, propane. Um, it does come with legs that you can screw into right here. Um, about 12 inches long, just basically pipes. Uh, and you can sit it over a fire, but with me, I like the gas because it's steady, it's constant, you don't have to mess with it as much. So today, for these canas, we're gonna be making, and usually for mine, it's kind of the same thing. We're doing chicken, pork, and then beef. And we have summer sausage, bacon, and then for the vegetables, we have tomatoes, jalapenos, onions, and then bell peppers. Uh, the ratio that I usually do is one pound of beef to one pound of pork, to two pounds of chicken, uh, just because people like chicken a lot. It comes out really tender, it's really good. Uh, but for this one, I tripled up on the chicken, so there's three pounds of chicken, two pounds of pork, and then just the one pound of um, beef. Uh, now this is summer sausage. Sometimes people like to put chorizo. If you're putting the tube style of chorizo, kind of like the summer sausages, then it comes out good. If you're gonna be using the kind that has the casing on the outside that you squeeze out, I would not recommend that for a discada, because once you cook that, it crumbles, and when it darkens, it makes the food look, I don't want to say dirty, but it puts little dark pieces in your food. Uh, tastes really good, but it's the appearance. So if you are going to use chorizo, make sure it's the, the sausage kind that's just in a tube and you don't, you don't squeeze it out or nothing. If it has the casing on it, I wouldn't suggest it. Um, so the bacon, like I said, you can double or triple up on the bacon if you want. I usually pick four different types uh, just so I can add uh, color. So there's one green, one yellow, one orange, and then one red bell pepper. I have two onions chopped up and then I have about six jalapenos. I have about four Roma tomatoes, one pound of bacon, one pound of summer sausage, and then I already told you about the meats. You can adjust the ratios all you want to, depending on what you like uh, in your discana. So I'll be back in just a second. We'll go ahead and get it started up. All right, so I went ahead and rinsed out the disc. I always do that before you eat, just to make sure there's nothing in there. Uh, so the last bit of the water is evaporating. We're gonna start with the bacon because the bacon you want that grease to kind of coat the inside of the disc so none of your food sticks. But what you also want to do before you throw that bacon in, go ahead and throw some grease in there. We're just using sesame oil, not a big thing. You can use whatever kind of oil you have on, on hand, not a big deal. But what that'll do is it'll kind of prevent that bacon from sticking. If that bacon sticks from the get-go, yeah, you're not going to have any fun. It's going to stick. All the rest of your food is going to stick too. So get your disc nice and hot. You can see, hopefully it's showing up on the camera, the little bitty, I don't know what you call them. What do you call them? A little bitty wavy things? <laughs> when you see the wavy things, you know it's hot. So you'll go ahead and put your, your oil in. Like I said, you're not deep frying your bacon. You just want to coat uh, the disc. Just so when you throw your bacon in there, it does not stick. Um, that's kind of what you want. So like I said, I wouldn't recommend doing the chorizo um, that you squeeze out of the casing it makes a big mess and it makes everything look just like I said it just makes it look bad so what I usually do is I'll cut up all my stuff the day before um, and that way the day of that I'm cooking um, all you're doing is just cooking it you're just throwing stuff in there it makes it super easy you don't want to sit there and wake up early the day of and then start cutting all your meat by the time you're done, then you got to go out there and bring your disc outside, get the propane tank ready, and 
it's just so much easier doing it this way. You get everything ready the day before. So when you cook your bacon, you don't want to cook it all the way because you're still got a lot of more, a lot more other stuff to do. So you want to do it to where it's almost done, but not quite. What will happen is the way the slope, the sides are sloped on this disc, as things are done, we push them off to the side. Put our new meat in the middle. When it's done, push them off to the side. When you're done with everything, that's when you combine everything. So with the discs, the plow discs, you'll see some of them have this lip on them. Some of them don't. Some of them have handles. Some of them don't. It's just really what you want. Um, I wanted a disc that had a lip on it so that I didn't have to worry about food uh, coming off of it whenever I'm cooking. And of course the handle so I can move it. Now sometimes you'll actually see like a little bitty a round piece of metal that comes off either side. And that's usually where you can put tortillas whenever you're warming them up. Um, with the discs, what will happen, depending on where you're cooking, is you can actually, once you get all your food pushed to the outside, then you can go ahead and warm up your tortillas right here in the middle, right? You push everything to the outside, warm up your tortillas here, or you can do it the other way around, where all your food's still in the middle, and then you're actually warming up your tortillas on the outside. Um, I really don't do that, just because it's a lot easier. I guess if you're like camping somewhere, or if everybody was eating outside, then yeah, sure, go ahead and, you know, eat them right then and there, heat them up right on the disco, and boom, you're good to go. But usually we'll do them out here. I'll cook the food out here and take it inside. And then with the comal inside, it's just so much easier to, to heat up. Now you can heat up a bunch of them. Like if I were to take up all the food, then yeah, you can heat up a crap ton of tortillas at one time, and that's really good too. Uh, but usually when you're done cooking it, you have to clean it if you're gonna do that, because if not, then you get a, a bunch of um, food particles in your tortillas but it's not a big deal you're eating it anyway right so anyway so we'll finish up this bacon we'll come back in a second and next is going to be the summer sausage so i had a bit of an issue even with the so i have my camera set up in under an umbrella and for some reason it still said that my phone was overheating so i had to stop it and let it cool off so the only thing that you missed was the summer sausages which are right here so the bacon was done um, i pushed the bacon up to the sides i put my summer sausage in there brown and with the summer sausage i mean really you don't have to cook it very often or very much you're just basically browning it so that was done which is what you see here um, now i got my carnita and my meat my beef so we're gonna do that one real quick um, i turned up the heat just a little bit i had to turn it down because it was getting really hot with the bacon in there and it was starting to smoke but like I said, for your bacon, you don't want it to be cooked, 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 like 100%. Uh, I don't know how y'all like your bacon, but like something where it's almost like soft is probably best. Um, so anyway, so we're, we're browning the meat now. So this is your beef. Your beef is going to go in first because it takes the longest to cook. So whenever you're cutting your, your food up, you want pretty much the same size, the same shape. So everything's going to be about the size of that sausage. With the exception, of course, the bacon. The bacon was about that big when I cut them. Uh, and then, of course, they shrink. So with your meat, remember, these are going in tacos. So you don't want little bitty bits and pieces. If you do bits and pieces, then guess what? When they start eating them, they're going to start falling out. Nobody likes fighting with their food when it falls out. So for your meat, you want them in long, thin strips. Don't do big chunks because, again, it makes it hard to eat. Uh, it's no fun having to rip it out of the tortilla. Uh, small pieces. So once this is browned, we'll go ahead and move over to the pork. The pork cooks the second fastest. And then the last is going to be the chicken. The chicken cooks super duper fast, so we'll do that one last. Alright, so it looks like the beef is done. So we're going to go ahead and throw in the pork. So what I like about the discadas is it isn't really... When I do it, it doesn't require a lot of seasoning. I mean, I don't put anything in there other than maybe salt. Um, the bacon, the sausage, all this stuff, the bell peppers, it's going to add its own flavor to it. So it's not like, oh, you need freaking 12 tablespoons of thyme and basil and blah, blah. No, it really just seasons itself. I mean, like I said, I made this quite a few times. Um, I always use a spatula to catch it or it's just going to pop up on you. Throw your pork in. Let that cook up. Um, but yeah, usually you don't have to add anything else that I've seen. Like I said, people make these kind of different ways. Usually it's mostly beef. I have seen people make this with seafood, shrimp and whatever. Um, I'm not really that much into seafood myself, so I really don't do that. But, you know, I can see how some people could or some people would. I mean, it's 
It's a really good dish to make. It feeds a bunch of people. Super easy. It'll probably take me about maybe an hour to cook this for everybody, which when you're cooking for 20 plus people, that's actually pretty quick. So you see that pork's cooking really fast. That's a good color. And so with the pork and the chicken, you really don't have to worry about it drying out. Um, we're gonna have the, the grease from the bacon in here, but then too, as you're cooking, the, uh, the liquids from the beef and the pork, and of course the chicken are gonna start letting go and you're gonna see more and more liquid um, in the bottom right here, which is perfectly fine. That's flavor, that's what you want. Um, if you're doing a lot of vegetables, and you'll see that here in a little bit, if you do a lot of vegetables, um, it's gonna release a lot more. So like if you put a lot of tomatoes in it, you're gonna get a lot of liquid. And the first time I made this, I was making it for 40 plus people, and I had, I mean, the liquid was about to right here. And I'm like, man, this isn't what I wanna do, right? I don't wanna boil the food. I wanna, I wanna, it's not grilling, it's just a discada, it's a method, right? So what I ended up doing, I pushed all the food out to the sides, just like this. Everything pulls at the bottom because of the shape of your disc. And then I scooped it out, right? But I didn't throw it away. You put it in another container because once the meats are done, then you do your vegetables. Your vegetables take the longest. Um, so with those, and I'll show you the method behind that. Like I said, I've seen people do them different ways. This is the way that I do it, and it's worked for me a bunch of times. So the chicken's almost done. I'll come back in just a second. We're gonna start with, oh, we still have the chicken. This is pork, what am I thinking? So the pork is almost done. As, as, as when I don't see any more pink, then I know it's done because it's still gonna cook while it's on here. And you'll see later on, just because I push it to the side doesn't mean it's not gonna cook anymore. Well, like I said, you'll see here in a second. So we'll come back when this is done, once I'm ready for the chicken. All right, so it looks like our pork is done. So again, we're gonna pull everything to the side, pull to the side. Yeah, it does slide down, but I mean, if you keep doing it, it'll find its spot and then it'll stay. Um, there are some discs that are steeper than others to where it doesn't do this. These that are steep are more for frying. Um, it just really depends on what you want. I mean, it's, it's all preference in my opinion. I would like to get a smaller one for whenever we're cooking something just for us, like the four or five of us. But when you're having a big party, you don't want to sit there and have to do it five or six, seven different times. It's kind of a pain. So here we go. Here goes the chicken. Again, use your spatula to catch it so that it's not splashing up on you. Hopefully you can hear my voice over this sizzling. So again, if you see the pieces of chicken and pork and beef are all pretty much the same size, right? They're not going to be exactly the same size or shape, but you want it like that so that it cooks the same. You don't want big chunks of chicken and little bitty pieces of carnita because then your carnita is going to dry out and your chicken is still going to be raw. So. Uh, the chicken's going to cook pretty fast, but this is three pounds compared to two pounds of the pork and the one pound of carnita, so it'll take a little bit longer than the other ones. So we'll cook this chicken up. Uh, I'll come back when it's almost done, and then we'll be ready for the vegetables. Give me a second. Okay, so I zoomed out just so you can kind of see me so we can talk kind of through, like I said, why I do it the way I do it. So um, you don't really have to cook them 100% all the way through. Chicken, yeah, because you, know, you don't want to get sick. But as you push them to the side, they're going to keep cooking. You know, it, that's not going to stop cooking. So what I'll do, of course, the meats, you want those cold when you put them in. You don't want your meat to go bad. But your vegetables, I usually take mine out so they come up to room temperature. Because if you don't, they're going to be hard. And if they're hard, they take a lot longer to cook. So we're going to go ahead and throw our peppers in. So that's why I said that color freaking beautiful. So actually, we'll do the peppers and we'll do the onions at the same time. All right, so here go the onions. So with these, we'll throw them right on top. So like I said, uh, with these vegetables, they'll start to release some pretty good liquid um, as you go. So we have our bell peppers, we have our onions. Uh, and like I said, these, the meat itself will keep falling into the middle, but since you have so much stuff, it's not gonna hurt anything. So once I add these tomatoes, these tomatoes are gonna release a lot of liquid. Uh, and that'll essentially start steaming uh, the food. Steaming to where they're getting tender. They're not just uh, <laughs> cooking hard. 
So this is where I said before that when I started throwing my vegetables in, I got a whole lot of liquid coming out. And it was like, man, I'm over here boiling my food. No, that's because everything's letting go all that liquid. So we'll run this for a little bit. And then when these are done, then we're gonna do the last part of it. And that's kind of the interesting part, I think. Uh, it kind of ties everything together. Uh, and this is basically, so when you're looking at the videos on YouTube, they'll tell you, okay, throw the bacon in, boom, push it. Throw your meat in, push it. Throw your pork in, throw your chicken. But they don't explain. I like to know why. If you're gonna tell me that I need to do this one first, let me know why I need to do it. I just like understanding the why behind it, not just because. So like I said, with the vegetables, that was something I learned the hard way, right? They were cold when I threw them in the first time. They took forever to cook. I had to cover it with foil. You shouldn't have to cover it with foil to keep the heat in. Uh, but I didn't know at the time. Um, so like I said, let your vegetables come to room temperature when you throw them in so that they cook faster. The meats, no, you don't have to. The meats, you can throw them in cold, not gonna be a problem. So we'll come back in just a second once these are almost done. All right, so look, I'm gonna bring y'all in close so you can see what I'm talking about. So you see these vegetables? Look how beautiful that is. Oh my God, if you could smell it. Man, let me tell you, it's hot as crap outside right now, but this kind of makes it worth it. I mean, get that beautiful color. You have all your meats ready to go. So next, which is the last, are gonna be the jalapenos. I don't cut my jalapenos up, I leave them whole, but there's a certain way you put those in this disc. You can't just throw them in there and be like, okay, it's done. So give me one second, let me grab them really quick, and I'll come back. All right, everybody, so we're almost done. Um, you see how that outside skin of that bell pepper is wrinkling up when I push it? That's how you know it's done, it's salt. So we still have a little bit more. So what we're gonna do, jalapenos, whole. I don't cut them, I leave them whole. We're gonna push all this stuff to the side and with the vegetables it gets a little harder because they're slippery. So we're gonna make a hole. We're gonna put the jalapenos right in the middle. Right in the middle. And like I said, nobody ever did them this way. This is something that I figured out. I don't even know if it's a good thing or not, but this is what I do. Yeah, these are big jalapenos. My family likes jalapenos. So jalapenos go in there and the very bottom because they take the longest to cook for whatever reason, like I said, they are room temperature and now goes the beer boom you see that oh man look at that so what you're gonna do you're gonna cover the jalapenos with everything jalapenos are gonna be on the bottom on the bottom so what you're doing is you're sealing those jalapenos in and that's basically gonna steam them the jalapenos take the longest for whatever reason I don't know why but they do. And then what I'll do is I'll knock everything down. This will kind of bring everything back together. We're not gonna mix it quite yet. Mixing is the very last step. We don't wanna mix until we're sure that the jalapenos are done. Once the jalapenos are done, we'll come back, we'll mix everything together, and it'll be done, it'll be ready. So we'll let that sit. We'll leave them in the middle. In about five minutes, I'll come back. I'll uncover just the middle. Check the jalapenos, if the jalapenos the outsides are soft like the bell peppers then they're done once that's done you're good to go so come back in a minute so let me take you in close so you can see where we're at now sorry for my finger so we have all the food in there you see the sizzling and the boiling that's cooking those jalapenos through the, the vegetables are gonna be I mean I can tell just by the color of the vegetables they're almost done your meat don't worry about it your meat's gonna be fine it's not gonna be dried out not with all that liquid um, so I think maybe about five more minutes and it should be done. We will see. So this is what I was saying. Every once in a while, go ahead and uncover your jalapenos and give them a push. If they don't wrinkle, they're almost there. If they don't wrinkle when you push them, they're not done yet. I mean, you could, I guess it really depends on how firm you like them. Uh, but we'll give them a little bit longer. Like I said, cover them up. All that juicy goodness will cook them through. Oh man, <laughs> it'll be good. It smells freaking awesome. I wish you guys could smell it. So we'll come back in a minute. Like I said, maybe five more minutes. I like them to be done. I mean, they're still gonna cook somewhat because they're gonna be sitting in a, in a warm pan and you know, whatever. But I like to be, you know, as soon as you say, hey, the food's ready, boom, everybody start digging in. So we'll give it a few more minutes and then we'll go. 
So I think we're done. So like I said, what you'll do is you'll open them up. And if you look at the jalapenos, you see how they're just so pliable now? It's like blue, blue, blue. That's how you know they're ready. So here's where we go. So this is what we're gonna do now. So now that everything's done, we're gonna go ahead and mix, mix. See that color, mix. So from the outside, we're mixing everything together. Everybody's jumping in the pool. The flavor, I'm telling you, the stuff is done. Look at that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Isn't that most, let's shut off the fire. We don't wanna burn nothing. Look how beautiful that is. I'm telling you guys, the flavor, you don't have to add, you could taste it now. And if it needs anything, you can add salt. It shouldn't need anything, like I said, because of the sausage and the bacon. But, I mean, from here, this is why I said you can actually just push everything into the middle if you want to. And then heat your tortillas up on the outside or the other way around. Make the hole in the middle and heat them up in the middle where it's hotter. Um, like I said, I turn off the fire because um, we're going to heat them up inside. It's easier for me that way. We're going to go inside anyway. Um, you can leave it like this. It'll stay hot for a while. It's not going to cool off anytime soon. Um, and you're done. This is enough for 20 people. I, pr I promise you. So, like I said, um, yes, there's a bunch of these gala recipes, how-tos out there. Um, but I wanted to get my little spin on it, show you how I do it, why I do it the way I do it, and kind of explain the reasons behind it. It kind of makes you understand it a little better. So if you did have the chorizo, like I said, the other kind, throw it in there. Some people throw bologna in there. Some people throw shrimp in there. Take out the bell peppers if you want to. So like with the onions and bell peppers, I cut them in big chunks because not a lot of the kids, and you see there's quite a few kids, not a lot of the kids eat that stuff. So if it's big pieces, it's easier for them to pick out. You still get that flavor in the meat, but they can at least pick it out so they're not eating it. Yeah, kids are picky, so am I. I don't like that stuff either. Um, if you cut them real small, then it's lost in there and the kids aren't going to eat it. All right, so I have to hurry up my phone. I guess this is freaking Texas heat. Like I was halfway through my, what's it call it? My closing and it freaking died on me because of the heat. So real quick, I uh, just wanted to do this quick video. Uh, just to say kind of happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. My dad, my brother, my brother-in-law all back here. I love them to death. Um, so we're going to go inside and get something to eat real quick. Um, I appreciate you guys uh, watching my videos, subscribing and liking my videos. It means a lot to me. Hopefully I can put together some more good content for you guys. Um, so like I said, again, happy Father's Day to everybody out there. Until I see you next time, God bless.